I'm not a like a a, a do, doomsday prophet or anything, but but I really do see this as being a huge shift, right, in the way music is created, consumed, um, thought about, right? It's going to redefine terms. Um, I think everybody knows on the inside and the outside, first of all, how amazing the models are that have not been released. You know, look, maybe we're at the GPT-2 version of, of music generation today, but we're going to get to that chat GPT version um, and that's going to change some stuff, right? Yeah. Um, these issues aside, right, it, it, it is going to happen. And there is an op- what that means is there's an opportunity to rewrite some of those rules, write some of those wrongs, you know, or perceived wrongs um, and create the system that you and I maybe always dreamed of, right, as, as artists. What's going on? Welcome to the New Music Business. I'm your host, Ari Herstand, author of How to Make It in the New Music Business, the book. Third edition is out now everywhere, uh, however you get books, whether that's uh, audio or ebook or hardcover, paper, physical books. You can find it wherever you get books. Today, my guest is Alex Mitchell. He is the CEO and founder of the AI music company, Boomi. Now, you may remember Boomi from all the headlines uh, back in May of this year, where the headlines was uh, AI music app Boomi has created 14.4 million tracks to date. Spotify just deleted a bunch of its uploads after detecting stream manipulation. And then everybody picked this up about what's going on with AI music. And Boomi was kind of this poster child and a lot of the industry's ire was directed at Boomi because a lot of people just didn't really understand what was going on because Boomi, just to break down what Boomi is, um, it is a way for anyone to go on the platform, uh, create a song quickly. And we talk about it. Alex breaks it down, um, you know, really well there. And it's it's very easy to create a song here. I did it. Um, well, we didn't actually uh, listen to it um, on it, but I, I'll play it um, as the outro here. Um you know, I made a song on this and they also act as a distributor. So you can create the song and then you can distribute it to Spotify. Now, uh, and Boomi, they, uh, in their terms, is they own all the music. And I asked Alex about this. Why does Boomi own the music that that people are creating on this? And it's AI generated or whatever. And like, he gives a really good explanation of what ownership means and why they're they're doing it. So, so yeah, you know, we have a very nuanced conversation about the future of AI, AI music, how it's all functioning, all of that. Um, you know, I've read all of the stories, watched the movies and the TV shows and and all of the kind of apocalyptic stuff about, uh, you know, the probability that AI is going to destroy humanity, et cetera, et cetera, in X number of years, whatever. We, this conversation, we get into the, the nuances of everything, but it's not fear mongering, you know, as someone as Alex, who's been in AI music now for he would say over a a decade or so, believe it or not, before anyone really knew what AI was, let alone how it could be used for music. He's been thinking about this a long time. And he is at the forefront talking with policymakers and rights owners to help create the mechanisms, the laws for what the next phase of the music industry can look like because AI music is here and how are we going to approach it? Now, is it going to be a tool? Is it going to be, you know, how are we using it? And of course, we've heard these breakout case studies. Um, You know, I reference, we reference a bunch of them in this episode and feel free to kind of Google any of them after as we're talking about it. We'll put some in the show notes as well. But it's an interesting time we're at. And so this is my first episode with um, a with someone that specifically deals in AI music and, and works in this and is and is one of the founders of, of the AI and AI music company. I think you're really going to enjoy this. Uh, it's a longer episode, a slightly longer episode than normal, but I encourage you to stick to the end. We, the the end is where we get into the the juice of everything. It gets real juicy towards the end. And um, at one point, Alex asked me, he's like, "Well, how would you build this? And what 
what we, and, and I hadn't really thought about it before, but you'll hear what I how I would build um, a, an AI music uh, platform creation platform that compensates artists fairly. And let me know if you agree with me on that and and what what I left out. And like Alex said, he wants to hear from more independent musicians, artists, songwriters, producers to help guide the next wave of this. So if you're an indie that's listening to this indie artist, something like that, and you know, get in touch with him. You can find Alex Mitchell on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter at Mitchell, with two L's, show, M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L, show. Um, and then on LinkedIn, he's Alex Mitchell. Um, it's actually uh, LinkedIn slash Alex J J A E Mitchell. Um, so yeah, feel free to get in touch with them. But I uh, I encourage you again to listen to this episode all the way through. It uh, it gets very very interesting towards the end. You can find all of us that make the show happen at Ari's Take on Instagram Threads. Yes, we are on Threads, uh, TikTok, and Twitter. You can find me at Ari Herstan on Instagram or Threads. And uh, visit Ari'sTake.com, get on the email list, and that's where you're going to get the most up-to-date, relevant information about the new music business. Um, Ari'sTake.com, get there. But right now, just pause this episode, uh, hit subscribe or hit follow, however you're listening to this right now. Um, if you want us to be in your feed and you want more episodes like this and, and you like what you're hearing... Hit that subscribe, hit that follow button if you've been already. Leave us a five-star review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. That really helps. All right, let's kick into the show. Alex Mitchell, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ari. Oh, I'm so yeah. excited for this one. Oh, yeah. So um, this is really crazy how this all came to be. Um, just, just to give a little... Um, I, I just want to give a little context here for the listeners. So we... Uh, go back many years when uh, you were uh, you had founded and created uh, audio kite um, which was this incredible market research platform I I thought it was game changing Thank you. I, yeah oh yeah and it was like something for people that don't know it's like you know oftentimes a lot of people don't um, know if artists are have a hard time knowing if their music is any good or not uh, we, you know, we like to believe that everything we make is, is incredible, whatever. And it's hard to get objective feedback out there, uh, from friends and family or whomever. No one wants to hurt your feelings and yada, yada, yada. So you created this platform where you're like, you could just get random, normal, average listeners, whatever to listen and get feedback. And I thought that was awesome. Um, and so we connected over that. And then I remember like, I don't know, years ago, we caught up on the phone and you're like, yeah, I just won this, this like you know, developer contest thing or something or another for AI music. This is before anyone was talking about AI or I didn't know anyone. Well, and also not to interrupt, but you were, yeah, you were just a blog back then. And yes. now you're like a freaking best selling writer. Sorry, not just a blog. <laughs> right. But no, but it's true. I just, your I, studio yeah. was not as nice. I remember no. the video calls <laughs> as it is yeah, now. Yeah. There was no cool poster. No, I saw no. your book, by the way. I saw it out in the wild. Oh, right on. At a bookstore? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, actually, Hell it was at yeah. Mass Mocha of all places. Oh my gosh, this is a total yeah, tangent, but it was at a, I love that. It was a really cool art museum. I was like, "That's oh Ari's book." I was like, "What?" It's like prominently placed. You can't Hell miss yeah. it. Oh my gosh, like, that's so cool out. to see that it's it's Sorry. an art museum. So yeah, um, hell yeah. No, so that's uh, well, shit. Yeah, so you're the first person <laughs> that I I uh, that I ever heard kind of AI music about uh, from. This is before. You know, I think this was, we must have chatted in probably like 2018, 2019, something like that. Sure, sure. Because um, you you launched Boomy right around then, something like that, right? That was probably when we were talking about it. I think it was, well, if if, if you want the, the background, um, I was thinking about it and, and talking about it actually during those days, right? Because yeah. we, we had some, um, we had like researchers, uh, and a couple of early startups, like we had people who were using the uh research tech right to evaluate you know these ai generated music outputs right interesting that, that, that's how i came to it um and i remember seeing it and that was like gosh that must have been 20 like 2013 maybe 2014 wow. even so, so let's let's on take this for it, a let, while yeah, yeah let's step back a and little bit before we get like into 2019 yeah yeah and before we get deep into the weeds of where boomy's at now and the product and and i went through it and i'm going to share you my i'm going to share my creation on on this oh call a little bit later <laughs> um but anyway um let's back up because i think it's important for people to understand your 
background um, as a musician uh, and just like your trajectory and journey of how you got here. Um, so just give us the background. Tell us, you know, where you came from and, and your history in music and, and like what brought you here. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, well, I mean, you, I think you you covered uh, some of it, but before Audio Kite, um, I was just a musician, um, like like you or like like anybody else. Uh, I was playing in I don't know a, a dozen, maybe even more uh, bands in New York City. Uh, I was a violinist. Uh, I played guitar sometimes. Um, I would literally just go onto Craigslist um, and and in New York and when I moved there and say, you know, who needs violinist today, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that that led to all sorts of all sorts of fun adventures. And you know the the takeaway there was, you know, there's a lot of musicians out there. There's sort of the musician industry, and then there's this other thing called music industry, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. the music industry was very alluring. It was very interesting. Um, and uh, through a manager that I had, through you know some small little label deals um, that I was either part of or or party to in in some band or another, uh, just got the bug. You know, like you, you got it too. Like this, there's the music business is complex. It's fascinating. Um, it requires entire books, right, to yeah. um, to get through. And so, you know, started with a, a product that said, "Hey, uh, to your to your point, um, maybe these musicians would do a little bit better, or you could be more efficient if you had more data, right? And if you had sort of first party data on what people thought about songs." Um, turned out that was a useful thing, and and we we sold that product. Um, and then, you know, I I had a sort of a moment, you know, while I was uh, running that thing where I saw some of these early AI generative uh, products and methodologies and had a moment of, you know, whoa, <laughs> uh, sort of the, oh, crap, like, uh, this is where probably everything is going to go eventually, right? Mm -hmm. um, that was pretty, and, and I think a lot of the sort of existential crisis that people are having now um, in real time, now that everybody's thinking about this, um, has been weirdly, you know, even if there's negativity pointed at us sometimes, it's been weirdly refreshing because those are all the things that I was thinking about eight, nine years ago, um, and probably some of what we talked about back then, uh, mm -hmm. which was, look, there, there's going to be so many different impacts that come from the fact that anybody's going to be a musician, but let's just start with anybody's going to be able to create music, right? Yeah. And, you know, the quality of that music, which is always going to be, you know, somewhat subjective, uh, will increase, right, over time and eventually be a massive disruptive force to everything we think about uh, the industry, everything we think about being an artist, a songwriter, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and so it just became an obsession. It was like like any other founder of any other thing. It was like, I couldn't let this thing go. Um, and we, we founded Boomi sort of out of that. And obviously it's you know grown, grown quite a bit uh, since yeah. then. Yeah, well, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, background. So uh, just for people that don't, um, you know, haven't really followed the stories or don't really know much about AI in general. Um, you know, I have, uh, or, or watch Black Mirror or anything like that, <laughs> uh, or follow the stories. Like, you know, I, I've become a, a so, somewhat obsessed with, uh, you know, the apocalyptic future of, uh, or the potential, I guess they're saying 20%, uh, that, that we're all doomed in, in 20 years or something like that. And the robots are going to take over and, and destroy humanity oh or whatever. Um, anyway, uh, break down what AI music is, because I, I don't think there's really a solid understanding of actually what that is, is AI artificial intelligence. I think we know the sci-fi movies, you know, whether it's Terminator or Megan or, um, you know, Ex Machina or whatever. We hear, you know, the apocalyptic stories and we've watched Black Mirror, yada, yada. That's all like AI, artificial intelligence, yada, yada. What does it have to, when it comes to the music space, what you do, sure. break down how AI works. Can we get one happy AI story from Hollywood or from anybody? You're you in know, LA. Can you ask there, somebody to make there anything is this positive book. ever? Seriously. <laughs> there, but, but so I started this book called A Little Tangent, a little, uh, called uh, AI uh, or 20, what is it? 2024, AI 2024, something like that, I believe it's called. And okay. it's, it, it's a, it was written by, uh, I should, I should pull this up so I get this correct. Um, and it was written by these like former Google engineers or something like that. Um, and one of them turned to, into a sci-fi writer and it's basically, oh yeah. So Kai Fu Lee and Chen Kifan, um, and they all, it's a bunch of short stories that take place in the year 2024, um, 
of just like how AI is going to exist in our lives in the future. And they're sure they're not apocalyptic. It's like an insurance company, like this one story takes place in uh, Mumbai and it's kind of like the new insurance company that everyone's all obsessed with plugs into everything that you do within your life uh, and all the apps and everything like that. And if you live quote unquote healthier or follow the, you know, things in the then your rates go down your premiums go down because because mm. this like insurance app is using sure. it can monitor everything but then it starts to go in and it's just like they don't want you dating certain people because that's high risk and like stuff like that and, <laughs> and, and yeah know. and look i the, the, with the black mirror stuff i i i really think that it's a lot more interesting to pontificate about the apocalypse than it is to be like wow like that makes research a little bit easier like yeah period <laughs> you know totally um, and, and, and it is remarkable. I'm going to answer your question. Yes. Uh, this is going to be tough. We're going to, we're, we're tangent people. I know. And we're going to keep going <laughs> off. Um, the, but um, I'll, I'll answer your question. What, what is AI, what does AI music mean? What does AI mean? I, yeah. I really think it doesn't mean anything. And every, and look, I've been in this, I've been in this field for, you know, eight, nine, maybe longer um, for a long time. Right. Mm -hmm. And I've been talking to people much smarter than me on the te uh, technology side people much smarter than me on the, um, you know, on the business side. And one thing that has been persistently clear throughout all of those years is that when we use the word AI, we tend to use it to mean automation, right? Uh, to, to, to the extent that like we describe what we do as being, you know, we have a music automation team, right? Okay. AI is obviously a component of that. Machine learning is a component of that, you know, creating models is a component of that. But I'll give you a great example. And I'm a broken record on this. I don't think anybody in the field, if you had a, you know, otherwise normally produced song, uh, and this is a song that's created in a DAW by a person, like, you know, it's, it's a song, it's just a regular song, but yep. then you took a deep faked vocal and you put it into that song, right. And then paid for somebody to master it and produce it at a very high level that we would call that an AI generated song, right. Or that we would call that AI music. I think if you rewinded to January this year, and I described that to somebody and said, hey, is that an AI song? I'd be like, no, that's like a song with an AI vocal on it, sort right. of, right? Right, right. Um, But of course, right, when now, <laughs> incredibly, if you're like, hey, what's AI music to someone? They're like, oh, yeah, it's like that that fake Drake thing, right? So the Drake, it, real it's... weekend song, which which just to, to break down what that song actually was, is exactly what you just, just outlined. It was somebody that... Right created a, a foundational production some might call it a beat but it was a human that created that beat and created this whole production and then right like you said created that deepfake so that that's really good important context because i think it got lost in that news cycle or the headlines that like somebody pressed a button and like it generated this complete song with the full right. production and the full vocals yeah. of the Drake and the weekend yeah. and whatever the lyrics, but there was a lot of human power behind that actually making it. And it was just those vocals that kind of, yeah, not, not to get stuff. conspiratorial, but I think there was a reason why people wanted it to, to, to think of it or brand it that way. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's something that, first of all, just off the bat, I'm not for, I don't think we should be copying people's voices um, and putting them in a song. And, and what it's done is it said like, well, if you're pro AI music, then does that mean like, you think that you should be able to just copy somebody's work or copy somebody, right? So it, it like takes you into that apocalypse really, really fast. Um, the way I, I'll tell you how I think about AI music, right? Okay. Um, and, and what that at least means to us, it means automation, it means you know, giving somebody who does not have the skill, right, or maybe the the background of the time or, uh, you know, the the wherewithal to find, you know, the new music business and read through every single page and go through all that stuff. Like, in some ways, it's, you know, we've been about not just, you know, how can we draw creativity out of people who don't necessarily have the prerequisite skills. Um, it's also about simplifying, you know, everything you write about uh, into an experience where they can, you know, come in and they can, you know, very easily create music. They can very easily monetize that music. They can sort of claim their their place, however small uh, or however big in sort of the music economy and it, you sort of break down some of those barriers. I mean, the things that that we've been talking about for years around a, a fairer, you know, system um, of royalties, right, which I'd love to talk to you about uh, mm -hmm. around, you know, let's, hey, there's all these middlemen. Hey, this thing is so, you know, complicated. If you introduce technology, uh, including AI power technology into that, you know, you can get to this this state, and and this is obviously you know what we're building uh, at Boomi, 
where I, I really think the future of music looks like simple interfaces, right? And the simplest probably being natural language uh, to describe what you want, not just in terms of that initial, like, hey, give me this song, here's the song and it's done. Right. But, you know, hey, like, I didn't like this piece of it. Can you change that? I didn't like this. You know, I want this to sound more more in this direction. Everything that we would do in a studio um, can can be done. And the the net impact of that, right, um, is you have today, and, you know, these numbers are fuzzy, but probably about 8 million, 9 million musicians, right-ish, that we would okay. call like capital M musicians. Uh, there's 8 billion people on the planet. Mm -hmm. And it, my, my strong view here is that there's so, somewhere in those 7.9 uh, other billion, so, somewhere in those billions, billions of people, right, um, is is a, a right to be able to express themselves with music. And we can use technology to do that. So it's pretty simple, right? That's that's the principle okay. that, we, that, that I think about be, as being like what people sure. are calling AI music okay. today. Yeah, and I didn't give so, you a technology lesson into like how that works under the hood. No, no, no. But I don't, I don't think that's that, what you're that's asking. Even, I think you're no, asking no, no, like culturally, what does AI music this mean? Is, yeah, it's just like and, changes every week. Sure, and let's 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 focus on what you just said first, and then we can get a little bit more into the technology weeds a little bit later. But um, so it's it's essentially a tool that um at least in the boomy sense of what you're talking about is kind of like if i'm understanding this correctly it is something for not your not like the professional musicians necessarily but um kind of the hobbyists if you will or someone with just like that wants to express themselves in this way can use this to kind of create something um, create a, a musical piece um, in a very simple way that they can then share if they want. Is that kind of it? Yeah, sure. I, I think from a, and, and I think your struggle to define what this, who that is, right? And, and what this sort of emerging creative class looks like, would you call yeah. that a hobbyist, right? Would you call that um, a, you know, well, just because they're on Spotify doesn't mean they're a professional musician, right? Like, I think a lot of those definitions are what we are are breaking new ground on, right? Yeah, and 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 maybe even you know challenging uh, some of those traditional definitions. That's what pe that's what gets people nervous, right? And mm -hmm. I and I'm that's those are the areas that tend to be um tend to be really interesting in, in conversation. Is you yeah. know what what is a musician now, right? Like, what does yeah. that mean in a universe where people are going to be able to create um you know amazing stuff without yeah. much effort right what is a musician what is a producer even because like the 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 definition of what a producer is has evolved tremendously over the years uh in the music industry you know like way back in the day uh you know a producer like a george martin or something from the beatles it was just like you're kind of in the room choosing the microphones, but the band is just playing the arrangement. Maybe you're helping with the arrangement a little bit or, or whatever. And you're kind of like set in the recording session, but you're like not actually cr like actually create using any instruments or creating any music there necessarily. It's just your help guiding the process. You're almost like energy, like Rick Rubin style of production is almost just like guiding sure. the energy of the room, you know, and it's not, I mean, yes, he's made beats way back in the day, but he doesn't really do that anymore. But then you, you know, you talk about like a Max Martin or something like that, who is creating 100% of the instrumentation, you call, people call that the beat or whatever, and that's his style of product. There's so many different kinds of producers out there. And so like, when we even talk about like, what is a musician, what is an artist, what is a producer, what is a songwriter? And I kind of look at Boomy because now I've, I've had some time to play around with it. It's just like, it's almost, it's like a producer essentially. Like I can use Boomy in some sense if I wanted to create a production for me. I even saw some releases that were on the Boomy playlist on Spotify from artists that listed Boomy as the producer. <laughs> like, yeah, the yeah, producer they, yeah like, they do do that Boomy. sometimes. It makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, I get it. Now, um, I, you know, when I was experimenting with it, um, I, and I, and to break down, like, to, I, I understand what you're saying more is like, make this interface super simple where anyone can go in and rearrange. And it's like, yes, I can kind of copy this section, paste this section, I can put it around, I can make it shorter, I can, you know, change the sound of the drums a little bit, but it's not, it doesn't look like a DAW. 
It doesn't look like plugins. It's a totally different interface. That is, I think, you know, if someone that's not a producer, not a musician that isn't trained in, you know, digital audio workstations that comes in and is like, oh, this is intuitive. Oh, okay. Which took a little reprogramming for me because I am trained and I do know how logic works and in pro tools and whatever. And I go in here, I'm like, wait, how do I, why can't I change the, you know, the volume here yeah, and how sure. do I add it? And like, I want to get in the weeds. I'm like, oh, that's not what this is. Like, this is totally, <laughs> this is, I had to like and, refocus. <laughs> well, well, yeah. And, and look, there's, this is, I, we, I was in a, in a conversation today with our product team about, yeah you know, we, we call it the dog question, right? It's like, do you eventually d want to get to a point where you can give people extremely granular tools, right? To be able to, to do this stuff. Whereas right now, you know, for, for professionals, right. And, um, you know, don't take this the wrong way, but we're not, we're not building Boomi for you, right? You got a right. guitar sitting back there, right? Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. you're in the 8 million, right? Right. Um, I'm, I'm, I think the 8 million, I mean, it's never been a better time. Right. I mean, if, if you know what you're doing, like mm -hmm. the, the, the number of tools out there and how probably AI will improve those tools as well, um, you know, is, is amazing, but, but let's think about what you need, right. Even to just like fire up the trial version of Ableton, you need a laptop, you need electricity, you need all this stuff. Um, you, you need to know what a recording is. You need to know, like, what does it mean to have a track? What does it mean to have an instrument? What is a cello? What is a flute? Like, if we just think about all of the knowledge required, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, even to just get started or to get yeah. to something, right? Yeah. Um, it's why there's 0.01% of the population or 1% of the population gener uh, generously uh, that that participates in in this in this world, right? Yeah. And so if we we've thought about the design question from the perspective of, okay, what is the what is the sort of like minimum possible humanity ish right to some degree of like what of what you're going to bring um and frankly i think what what we have launched versus what we're building versus how we're thinking about uh, evolving some of those editing tools mm -hmm. um there's there's a lot there's a lot on the way from us and there's a lot of research uh that we've done uh that tells us look if you want especially somebody from this upcoming generation to even pay attention and even stay in the experience long enough, right, to get something, showing them something relatively complete or, or a, a, as a starting point um, gets you to, to, you know, the result a lot faster than, hey, start from start from scratch, right? Yeah. And where that line is, I think is, and what those interfaces are, still very, very undefined, right? Yeah. We're talking about AI music, like it's an established thing. There's a whole bunch of different interfaces and experiences out there, right? Mm -hmm. um, Boomi included, and I, I don't know that any single experience has cracked it yet, um, but we do know that people want natural language, right? People want to be able to describe what they want. Um, and that's really what we're, we're working towards, you know, every day uh, in terms of delivering. Right. Cause that's not currently in the uh, product right now, the, where you can not, not today. Me. Yeah. Right. Cause I, I, you know, I made a, a song uh, and it's, um, no, it's it's kind of like I selected a what did I do? I just kind of saved some of my settings. It was like I chose um, the the composition, quote unquote, was like morning sun, you know, and I think it was like the ambient uh, category or something like that. And then like, um, you know, I chose like acoustic guitars instrumentation, the the dusty drums. Uh, the mixing selection was Vegas baby. I don't know what that means, but I <laughs> thought it was fun, so I chose it. Um, you know, I added some traffic sound effects. Um, and then I and then it like, you know, I hit like, go or whatever it was. And, and then it just like created the thing within like 15 seconds. And, you know, yeah, it was like a minute and a half. Uh, there were there was I guess you call it music. I, I don't I mean, you know, <laughs> it's just like, there were tones, I mean, you got it, you got to reject. I mean, rhythms. yeah. So uh, another thing that's really important <laughs> for us, right. And this is in part because we haven't used any, you know, copyrighted training data yeah. uh, in order to create, you know, the experience that you're seeing. Um, generally speaking, you're going to want to flip through, right? So we made yes. it pretty simple for you to say like, and you've noticed in the interface, like, nah, I don't like that, right? Or like, hey, try mm -hmm. again, try again with the same settings try or go in and reproduce with different settings, right? Um, and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very different way of thinking about how to create a song. Right. 
because yeah. you and and I and 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 definitely you know are, are a, a decent number of our users who um, we will work with right to to take what they've started with and you know give it to them off platform etc. Um, I, I really think that it's about what is somebody who does not know you know really anything about the music creation process. Yeah. Um, how can we give them something to start from, some way of of discovering right the possibilities of those different inputs, and then going back and trying again and kind of digging in, and that that's where we see things get really sticky, right? Yeah. Is that you're like, whoa, you know, I I want to coax the right thing uh, out of this. We we have users who are spending like tons and tons of time <laughs> um mm. you know in these sessions like uh finagling their song right in, into the thing that they want and uh you know when they get there they they feel I, I i would say the same uh sense of ownership or or, or an equivalent sense of ownership that you would right over yeah. the process if you'd just spent two years right writing sort of your perfect song or jamming yeah. you know with with your band um that's that's what i think we've seen uh, from the sort of like gigantic number of uh, pe people coming in the door. Yeah, and, trying and I to get stick. that. I mean, I spent a good amount of time uh, on a couple of these productions, uh, these songs, um, and, you know, just trying to like learning it and everything. And like, it was interesting because like, you know, I, I thought, all right, if I select Morning Sun, does, does every production start the same way? And the answer is no I, I think i mean every time you know and then like there's yeah. like the drums you could do like oh you know subtle to busy or whatever or is that those are the i think that's it um and like oh the density that's right uh the bass density the chord density the drum density and then subtle to busy and you drag the thing from like you know you know one two three four five whatever so I like changed that, but I'm like, oh, if if all of them are at a two and I am like, all right, let's see what that is on the morning sun. And I just, every time I refresh it or try again, as you call it on the, the interface, is it going to be the same one? Because it's like programmed like, oh, it's just all twos. It's the morning sun. It's these settings. But every time I hit try again, it was totally different. Right. Yeah. So what you're doing there is you're, you're basically creating a seed, right? You're creating like a set of... Um, and and we obviously are looking at this right on the other side of yeah, right. saying, hey, as people you know are saving stuff and as people are you know releasing songs and getting really excited about them, you know what are what are sort of those um, you know what are those inputs and what are those input values and can we apply those learnings to you know the uh, the defaults right that that people yeah. come into and yeah and 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 look there's this is very much built on a few different principles right the first is let's get you something that is um let, let's get you something as fast as possible right yeah, yeah. um so time time to um you know time to, to creation i think is really important uh it's also let's make sure that you know if if you don't like what you hear you can get something you know very 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 quickly right yep. uh let's also make sure we can do this and provide you know a free experience right just to, yeah. to to some degree um, or, or at least to some limit, because, you know, as we know, cost, right, is, is the thing that, um, that matters in, in this stuff. Um, and especially in some of these machine learning systems, like, you know, cost can be a, a pretty, pretty serious consideration. Uh, I think one of the magic tricks we've been able to pull off is, is, you know, and, and you do see, to be honest, as a slight trade off, right, I think between some of the generation quality we could achieve and the cost uh, of, of what we're providing to you. And, that's where there's just so much uh, interesting room for innovation, right? Mm. Especially concluding the business model, you know, would you pay more if you, if it was closer to what you want, would you pay more um, it, if you could use natural language, right? So the, these are sort of the, I guess, experiments, right? And ingredients yeah. that we have to work with um, as we try to figure out, you know, what is the, I, I keep saying like the chat GPT moment, right? Yeah. Like yeah. someone is one of us, you know, is going to figure this out. Um, and I think we're pretty close, uh, at least in the lab on, you know, how do I turn your, um, your musical description, your whims, you know, as a, as a novice or as a professional or as anything in between, um, into something, uh, something special, something unique, yeah. uh, something creative, something that's not just a derivative, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I think we, if you listen to sort of Boomi's outputs versus some, you know, some of these other systems, um, that those mistakes, that sort of like randomness and the wackiness and the fact that you can put in all twos and get something like actually very different from spin to spin right. um, is the balance between like, well, is what you want really just like a standard, 
you know, beat that anybody could could create? Or do you want something that's kind of interesting, kind of special and unique to you? Uh, so yeah. th those are all the things that we have to think about, right, from a design perspective. And of course, there's there's trade offs there. Yeah. So give me some uh, case studies or examples of just how some people have been using Boomi over the last couple of years that it's been active and live um, from the amateurs to the professionals. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll give you a few. There's a few. There's a bunch that aren't surprising at all. Right. I don't think it would surprise you to hear that there's lots of studios and uh, and like professionals who actually do use us in, in the studio. Um, in what and, way? How are they using you in a professional? Yeah. Studio? So. So there, it, it's sometimes as like a writer's block or sort of inspiration thing, right? Okay. And it's a look, hey, like, let's just get started. Let's just do something. Let's get some idea and pull it up. And, and you know, you got some idea there. And I even had a producer, a relatively well-known producer asked me once, like, you know, so if you, so if I create it with Boomi and then I kind of like, you know, maybe recreate some of that, <laughs> like in our studio. And maybe I've already done that. And like, are you going to sue us? And it's like, yeah, no, like that's, you'll never even know. I, I would, I would much, <laughs> right. Well, there's that. But I was like, I, I would rather you, you know, download our output and talk to our team and work with us, et cetera. But, you know, right. when we get those questions, it's, it's an open door to, um, uh, to working with us. Um, and so, so I don't think that, that would surprise you. I don't think it would surprise you to hear that you know, let's call it the functional music category, people who want to uh, create background music for their podcasts, for their videos. Uh, that's sure. been a, a pretty big category. Um, and, and a ton of people seem to want that, right? Especially this this year and, and all the growth we've seen this year. Uh, and so we've released, you know, some some pricing and, and some updates to our pricing that specifically grants licenses to those sort of like functional use cases. Cool, right? right. If, you, if you need a, you want a song for your video, you know, you can, uh, you can come to Boomi, you can create a song, uh, you can even release it and actually monetize it on, on YouTube, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, that's, that's an obvious use case too. I think the ones that are surprising and, and really kind of give a view to the future, um, are the, first of all, the, the younger generation, right? So like the under 20 crowd, mm -hmm. um, who, you know, as, as we, as musicians from our generation might, uh, go back and forth on these questions of like, what is a musician and what does this mean? And like, what's going to happen? Like, they're just making songs or like, Hey, check my song out. Right. Yeah. Um, and especially for a generation that I think is used to, let's call it shorter form media. Right. I would maybe the, the word disposable probably isn't right, but, but faster, <laughs> just quicker content cycle media. Right. Uh, that generation is is very sticky um, for for a product like this because it's like, hey, check this out. This is about this moment, this car ride, this whatever. And you know, it, it's not something that we have to pour all of this you know um, uh, time into, right? It's just like this is this is the cool thing. Um, so I, I think seeing you know the stickiness for for that generation has been really interesting because yeah. I think that they're not going to have the same. First of all, they don't. They're never going to live in a world where you didn't have this capability, right? This is new for us, not new for them. It's sort of like, how do I make music? Well, this is one of the ways, right? Right. Um, and the other that I think is that I would focus on is is the is in education, right? Um, there's so many classrooms. Uh, there's so many like just teachers and their students. And that's actually where we've seen a, a lot of growth kind of unintentionally is where the, the teachers are using Boomi uh, not only to teach music, but to teach about you know, what AI is and teach about, you know, how technology is going to change. And it's kind of a case study. Um, and sort of as what we were talking about before, we're sort of related to that. We're seeing a lot of teachers who are, uh, who have told us that, you know, if, if they're, if you're teaching a kid how to make music, right. And you show them a DAW or you show them Ableton, you show them like a million sliders and like all this crazy wacky, um, stuff and instruments that maybe they've never heard of and concepts that they've never heard of the concept of production, right? The concept of like, what is, what is a note and what is a MIDI and why does this, you know, mean that, right. uh, they tend to get overwhelmed and they tend not to finish, right. They tend sure. not to complete. It's hard even to complete like one song that isn't like totally, you know, totally, um, um, crazy. And what they've told us is that if you start with Boomi, right, if Boomi is the first thing, and it's mm. like, oh, cool. Okay, so here's a simple enough, right, interface, a simple enough slider, simple enough uh, to get these concepts across, get them really excited, um, and then move on, right, to to more advanced music making. And so we, mm -hmm. we've definitely been looking at that area 
uh, in a way that we're trying to figure out how we can support that that education use case uh, more explicitly because it it can collide sometimes with the you know uh, yeah. the, the how we've designed it for individuals. Um, so it's a yeah. very different thing. I guess as an entrance point, um, that uh, that makes sense to me, and I like that where it's kind of okay if you want to endear kids to music and music making and and showcase like a lower barrier of entry because yes. The barrier of entry, not just like putting the costs aside, uh, which are not small. I mean, they're a lot they're a lot lower than they were, you know, 30 years ago to to make a, a fully realized production. Um, but putting the costs aside, yes, the barrier of entry, uh, just in the knowledge base of just like running Ableton is tremendous. And, and that takes probably 100 hours to just like get going just to like understand what I'm doing and, you know, all of that, let alone become like an expert or something. But then, you know, so I, I suppose if this is kind of like what piano was to when I was growing up, it's like, well, start with piano. If you want to learn music, <laughs> piano is sure. the instrument to start with. And then we can go on to every other instrument because that's a solid foundation. It's like, all right, if we're going to start with production. And we were like, boomy, start with boomy. Then you can, uh, you know, move into, um, you know, more technical uh, workstations uh, that enable you the, more of the flexibility to to actually create what you're envisioning. Um, I, I get that. I guess um, you know it. Yeah, again, as a tool, because so so tell me about this. Well, and, use and, case. and let's not. But also, let's not forget oh. the other half of the product, right? Which is that then they can distribute. That they they can see themselves right. not not only as a you know as somebody who's just created this thing, right? Yeah. But they can actually, we, we've built a, a huge amount of technology um, to get them right to Spotify, get them to yeah. out in, into the market. And, and I actually think that is something that we take so for granted now, mm -hmm. right? But it is actually something that's really powerful because why, like who cares, I think is, is the scariest question in music. Um, who cares, <laughs> right? Uh, I mean about your it, music. Uh, yeah, about about well, okay. your music or about the the chart position or the whatever or the like the, for for the for the seven billion humans right for the seven mm -hmm. point for the for the billions of people out there who don't who who are really very passive about the way they think about music and the way they consume it right. Mm -hmm. One of the questions that I've been uh, trying to answer is how do you get them interested right? How do you get them to care? And I don't think there's any mm -hmm. better thing that you can do to, for example get people and get consumers, right? Thinking about, hey, maybe we should be paying more for Spotify or why does the payouts of Spotify work the way they work, right? Then to see themselves and to see mm -hmm. like, hey, you know, I, I get a, a so, revenue uh, when people consume my my content. If I'm well, distributing I, I through mean, Boomi I can go both ways on and that I because, get to TikTok, yeah. I can, you know, why why am I paying out to some other artist if I could, you know, pay, pay out to myself? And, and that's where, you know, we get into even crazier grounds on you know where where the stuff can go right and i do want to talk about the distribution uh aspect of all of this but i can also uh you know i, I would i would challenge that premise a little bit is because like sure i created a a full track a full song in boomy i just i hit the distribute button and it's and it's off for review right now it may be yeah it may go of course. up to the, We're, the dsps we do uh, review stuff yeah yeah or something at some point now this production it took me you know i maybe an hour to make it could have taken a lot shorter if i wasn't tweaking it and playing around or whatever and i'm i wouldn't say i'm proud of this but I, I even i added some vocals on it and i you know i had them kind of do the auto vocals and and like i spoke word and it was it's almost just like a spoken word track i guess it's almost like a rap thing that i didn't really do i don't know but anyway you know if somebody makes that and they put it out there they're like yeah i don't no, I don't think I deserve to get paid from that. You know, <laughs> it's kind of like, and so they could say that like, oh, distributed. And so it's like, oh yeah, well, if any money does come through and like, yeah, but it's so easy to make music. It's so easy. Like why, of course, music shouldn't be making more money because this was so easy and I just hit distribute yeah, and it's whatever. Interesting. But it's like, wow, you know, yeah. so it could, it could devalue and it could take it from like that person's perspective. It's just like, well, if anyone can do this, they don't deserve to be making money. <laughs> yeah, it, look, it's it's an interesting perspective. It's it's definitely one I've heard before. Um, and and I kind of want to dig on it, dig in on it, right? Because that's mm -hmm. that's I think the the I, I've been asked a lot about you know the hysteria, right, and the fear. It's like what do you what are you afraid of, right? 
um, with AI. And pe people are like projecting all these fears about AI. And let's make sure we're afraid of the right thing, right? Is what I keep saying. Like, yeah. I think a technology itself is not a thing to be afraid of, right? Um, right. I think it's that. I think it's what you just described, right? It's the fact that you take in specializations, right? And across the board of different types of media, right? Um, obviously, what's going on, you know, with the with the um, with the strikes right now, it's been a huge mm -hmm. topic, right? Mm -hmm. um, is well, you've taken these specializations and you've you've brought them to to everybody, right? And you 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 just have to. I, I think there's a cultural question that has to get answered, right? Which is like, do you think five billion musicians is a good thing or a bad thing? Mm -hmm. And depending on who you are and where you sit. Um, and where you are in the industry and where you are in the world, you're going to have different perspectives on that. Right. Yeah. Um, now, do I think that because you're, I, I guess what I would challenge is, you know, there's a notion that it's like, well, you're devaluing music or the, the AI system is devaluing music or it's the, you know, the fact that it's so easy devalues music. Um, it's the consumer that devalues music, right? It's the consumption platform. Well, you're that, making like, every... I didn't, I didn't design, I didn't design the consumption platforms, right? Yeah. I didn't design the way that people are. I can't control how somebody listens to it. If somebody wants to, you know, you, you're not made me. You're not. My guess is, as a like extremely skilled musician, the song you created with Boomy is probably not as good as your other music. Um, but for a lot of other people, it is. That's the best they can do, and and they're very proud of it, and they they see themselves in the same way that, that you see yourself, right? They're like, I'm a musician, I'm an artist, tell me I'm not. And, and all of the, I think, sticky questions that we're getting into these days um, is, is about like, where is that line? Like, what is that line? Uh, are we now gonna go into a universe where we say that because the way a musician created their song, right? Like they deserve to get paid or don't or should get paid differently or how, you know, so, so it, it takes you down kind of a weird road. But anyway, do you see what I'm saying there? It's like uh, kind of, the, but the you're, thing you're but, mad at is is the, the consumer in some way, well, right? No, I'm never mad at the consumer because um, that's like going back to the Napster era where the RIA and the major labels were suing the fans of music. It's like that was the wrong approach because they were quote unquote illegally downloading <laughs> right. music. Like they are the well, ones history that we rhymes with this AI stuff. Yeah, for sure. no, no, that 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 was the wrong approach. No, I'm never mad at the consumer. Um, and so, but but like you know, where is the value in all of this? It's just like, we have to set up those mechanisms to actually place value in, in showcase that music is valuable or should be valuable. So I guess I just, I'm curious when you say that you, there's, you know, seven, eight billion people out here and they can all use Boomi theoretically and make something within five minutes and distribute it to Spotify, doesn't that devalue? Aren't you the one that is devaluing music just carte blanche? No, I I don't I don't think so. And and I don't think so because you don't you're not forcing anybody to listen to it. I like just just because your song is out there, right? Does, doesn't yeah. mean it's it's gonna necessarily um well and and look clearly and and we've been wrapped into these conversations and ai has been wrapped into these conversations um and i wish people talked to me about this more because i have very strong opinions about this i think that if you look at the way the current you know streaming payout systems are set up and i mm -hmm. freaking loved your article about this by the way Thank you. um because everything is just incentives right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there is you know finally <laughs> You know, after all these years, and if and if you know, uh, you have to blame the AI people for it, then fine. But if we can finally get to something that you know pays based, you know, truly based on the 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 listener appeal, yeah. right? Truly based on consumption, yes. Um, then then I think you answer you've answered your question there, right? right. Me meaning like the value isn't, especially in the universe where we're sending something out to like a whole bunch of different outlets that pay very, very different rates, mm -hmm. right? Why? But pay very different rates, kind of all have different, well, it's using a video here, it's using a, in a, you know, podcast over here, it's sync here, like it's the, the book, your whole book, right? Um, right. There's all of this insane stuff. Rights and that, royalties and laws. That's, and that's where your value sits, right? Yeah. Dumping, you know, more, more music, which by the way, is happening without AI anyway, um, mm -hmm. take all the AI stuff out of this. It's not like it's harder to make a song today. Right. right. Um, it's just that I think, you know, you, you add a, a, a significant factor on top of it. Um, well, it's, it's not Ableton and it's not Boomy and it's not any, anybody really on the creation 
side and it's not distro kid on the on the distribution side mm-hmm. that is contri- that even could possibly in my in my view contribute to to some sort of devaluation it's well yes. where where are those dollars coming from how are those dollars flowing yes. uh, <laughs> is it fair and yep. is it a totally fair system for everyone yes. um that's where i think we need change and yes. and i you know i've heard many advocates for this advocate for the change uh, from different corners, all the way up and down uh, the the sort of music ecosystem. Mm-hmm. I don't know why there hasn't been change. It's kind of like everybody agrees that they're not happy with what's going on right now. Um, so you know, what do we? You know, how do we change it? Um, but I, th- if there's anything, I think it's AI can be an accelerant to that conversation. It literally is, especially here today, right? Yes. It's an accelerant to that conversation. Yes. And how it gets valued has to get valued by the market. So. And that's what I mean. It's oversimplified if I'm saying like the enemy is the consumer. The enemy is not the consumer, right? Right. Um, but the consumer is ultimately going to decide whether they want to pay a dollar more a month for well, Spotify or $80 mechanisms. a month for Spotify or, right. you know, $2,000 for a Taylor Swift ticket or, or whatever, right? Um, clearly, the market set- values different things in different ways. Yeah, we have to set up those guardrails and those mechanisms. And just for people listening that are not familiar with the article that uh, you just referenced, it's I wrote this for Variety. It's called AI isn't the music industry's biggest problem. Here's how to stop streaming fraud right now. And uh, what we're just to kind of like step back a little bit and just to like break down what we're talking about is um, currently most of the uh, streaming platforms, the biggest ones, Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Deezer title, they operate on a pro rata payout model, meaning um, if you pay $10 for a subscription this month and uh, for a streaming service and you only listen to my music, um, Taylor Swift, Bad Bunny, everybody else is getting some of your $10 subscription money because your money goes into the full pot of that Spotify or Apple Music has of money that comes in and then it pays out uh the based on the song's market share based on every other song in the platform whereas i think we need to move to a user generated payment model and this is what the industry is talking about it's like what we're just what you're just referencing is if you pay a ten dollar subscription uh this month and you only listen to my music i get your full ten dollars less the platforms what a concept it makes perfect sense and it's just like it goes back to kind of the sales era is like you pay me ten bucks for a cd I get your 10 bucks, you get my CD. I don't have to share the $10 with everyone who's ever made a CD. <laughs> well, there, there's a really, well, and, and not just that, there's, e- there's even a stranger way to illustrate this, which is, I mean, you remember the download era, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I, I have to, as a slight tangent, like that's what got me into this stuff, right? I think I was in, I think I was in middle school yeah, or, or high school. And, and, you know, I could see, I like made this, this music and it was on iTunes, right? It was on the yeah. iTunes store. Right, right, right. You're Whoa, like, yeah, right through TuneCore. ITunes, Remember, yeah, yeah. TuneCore was <laughs> massive, right, yep. at that at that moment. And also hugely controversial. And what mm-hmm. did people say when TuneCore came out? What, what were they saying? Oh, you're going to devalue, you're going to bring all this independent well, music it- into the market of us, the labels? Like, how dare, like, what? You're going to create this, you know, yep. market that anybody can can be in? Like, so I, I'm just saying it's very it, it rhymes a lot, I think, with with some of what we're talking about. But yeah. if you, if I paid you a, a dollar right in the 99 cents per song model, yep. you know, you got that dollar like the the idea that I'm going right. to pay a dollar for the download. But then, you Everyone know, else, 40 yeah. cents of it, 60 cents of it, 70 cents of that 99 cents is going to go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, just never made sense to me. It just never made sense to me. Yeah. And, you know, I, I getting back to your point of how AI music and Boomi and everyone is kind of accelerating this conversation. I my standpoint is I say, let's open the floodgates. Like, I know that Boomi has distributed how many songs? 15 million at this point to the DSP? No, 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 no. That's a really, really common misconception that like oh. it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, how many, doesn't matter how many times we correct it? It's 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 in the it's in the hundreds of thousands for sure, but it's it's less than a single digit percentage of why did, everything. Why did all created. the headlines say that that Boomi is distributed? Because because people didn't ask up. Because when when people <laughs> go crazy in the media, it doesn't kind of matter like what the truth like the truth stops mattering really really wow. fast. Is is something that I learned firsthand right being yeah. attacked in the media for the first time, definitely not for the last. Yeah. Uh, interesting experience, right? Learned, learned sure. a lot from it. Um, 
And I mean, one of the things you learn is who the journalists are, right? Yeah, like yeah. who reaches out and is like, hey, what's going on here? The real and who, reached his, versus, and, and who yeah, just like yeah. writes crazy nonsense. Yeah, no, we, we, when um, the 16, the, I want to say 16, uh, probably approaching 17 now, a uh, million songs that our users have created that that's just like how many songs people are making. Right. It's not, not that I made five um, today. I mantra. didn't distribute yeah, all yeah, of them sure. or whatever. Right, exactly. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and, and you'll notice that your, your album is in review. Right. And it's yeah, because yeah, yeah. we're, we have, um, you know, a layer of scrutiny that we're applying to. You should probably reject out. this song. Let and... me just say that this, this is not <laughs> nah, worthy we'll of. Are uh... you... No, no, no. You... But that, but that completely goes against. You <laughs> I, know, know, I know everything I know. that kidding. we're talking about here. Like, I know. Yeah, I know. Put it out there. Of course, what of if? Course. What if it gets into? By the way, we've seen this happen. Like, what if it gets into some TikTok? Okay, let, let, let me tell you a story um, about uh, like a real story about something that happened with one of our users. They they made this like spooky boomy song yeah. for their like um, TikTok channel. And um, I think I can talk. I think I'm allowed to talk about this deal. Um, the, and it was like a horror TikTok channel. Right. And mm -hmm. like the spookiness of it. And this is not a person who ever made music before. Um, and again, if you were to sit down and be like, let's have a listening session to like this song. It's not a song that you're going to like you know, that's going to compete on the billboard charts. Sure. Right. That's not the point. Um, it's for this video. But, you know, a, a film director. Uh, somebody who really, uh, I don't know, wanted to create a horror film was like, that's the perfect, that's the song. That's the perfect yes. song in this TikTok that like a bazillion people watched or whatever and reached out to us. And we're like licensing that for them. And we're going to share, share that revenue. Right. So, cool. so you're sitting over there in, in the mindset of like, I'm a musician and I'm somebody right. who has this model of the universe, right. That like, uh, there's, there is such a thing as like an RE song. Yeah. Um, and there is such a thing as, you know, your, your band's like vibe. And it's mm -hmm. unique and it's cool. And you're going to put that out there and you are going to compete. You would love to see yourself on the Billboard Top 100 is my guess, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, you wrote a whole book about it. And yeah. so this is a different kind of thing. Throw it out there. See what happens, right? It's a big yeah. market. It's totally. I different. called this, uh, the artist is named Boom Ari. Uh, so that's the, <laughs> the artist name of that on this release. So when you see this love review, it. this love track it. come through. But um, anyway, so getting back to, um, you know, and, and, and just to, uh what you're talking about just now like yes the songs or the, i should say the the snippets the clips the sounds as they call it that go viral on tiktok are like 15 20 seconds and like right. of this 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 song that i created with boomy this minute and a half whatever like sure i could probably find 15 seconds and it was actually pretty spooky uh that you know maybe could be turned into a viral tiktok or, or whatever that's besides the point but um you touched on a few things there that i do want to um highlight uh the fact that they have to come to you to license it, I did read, yeah. believe it or not, I read every word of the terms and conditions when Good. they popped up right there. Boomy owns every song yes. that is created yes. on Boomy. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. For sure. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, and I'm sure that people are confused by that because most people don't read the terms and conditions. They just scroll all about them and hit accept. But like, if there is money, I think I saw this, and and this is something that um, we can talk later about how to clean up your FAQ a little bit because I was a bit confused, and there's some broken links, and there's some things that I still don't know what DSPs you're distributing to. I could not find that anywhere on your site. I, I uh, promise it exists. It's at support boomy.com we recently made this change okay well i clicked around for a bunch of like yeah, where I'll are you distributing you. <laughs> these days and it's nowhere to be sure. found and then it's like click here and clear doesn't click but anyway um so whatever it's um so uh you own everything but if it does make money via the distribution uh boomy keeps 20 percent, and you pay out 80 yeah. percent. is that right okay yeah yeah um, but break down the ownership a little bit, because also just to, to, to frame this a little bit more, I've noticed some artists, uh, professional artists that have collaborated, quote unquote, with Boomy, listed Boomy as an artist, like, yeah. namely, um, you know, Stunna sure. for Vegas, who has sure. millions of monthly listeners. And it's a real song. I'm assuming he used a little Boomy snippet and that became part of the thing. So that's like almost like a collaboration and you were the label, but like break down the ownership component and how this works in, sure, the, sure. in the world. And, and so much of this is that what we do is we like, there's a universe that I wish existed and it's not the one we live in um, where everybody has great intentions and everybody wants to, you know, own, own everything. Um, but the, there are realities, right. And there's sort of trade-offs that, that we have to, do and there's others in this market who are not facing these realities honestly yeah. um 
in which you, you kind of have, you have a little bit of an all or nothing approach, right? You can either say all of this stuff is totally free to use, totally copyright free. We're not going to take any rights on it. It's going to be royalty free. And what you've done is you've lost any sort of control, right? Over what that content is and how that content is used. And we've seen, you know, waves um, of not so nice stuff uh, go on, right? Mm. Um, songs that have content that is, you know, either either very offensive or about things that uh, very much do not share our values sure. um, in an extreme way, right? We've seen, sure. I mean, in, in a user base of, you know, millions, like you're going to see, um, you know, I, I say it this way sometimes, it's like, there is no AI generated music. It's all humans making music. There's some complicated humans out there, right? Yeah. And and there yeah. are some bad humans out there. There's some there's yeah. some not so good humans on this planet, um, yeah. which doesn't come as a surprise to anybody. And so let's say you've got somebody who comes in and creates a song and it's about something horrible. Um, you know, we can't and they submit it for a review and release, and this has happened, right? And we I mean, we can we can stop it and we can say no, like don't put that song out. Sure. Um they can steal it. <laughs> Like piracy on Boomi is is not a non-issue, right? Um, they can take that same song, offensive or or whatever, um, and they can you know go to some other distributor and they can, they can download it. the song from and, Boomi and use DistroKid or well, they can rip it, right? There's a bunch of different ways they could rip it. I mean, okay. we don't allow this, right? It's in our terms that you're not going to do this, but people can yeah. break the terms. Um, and then you know if that song ends up somewhere, uh, and we have absolutely no way to control it. It's like in this debate, and there's all sorts of debates about rights and and music that's you know assisted by AI or or generated by AI or ha however you want to think about that. Um, in that debate, you know, I've heard this idea of well, it should all be public domain, and I'm sitting there like face palming because nobody has this kind of user. Nobody nobody's seen what that world would actually look like, right? Yeah. If everything that comes out of this thing is public domain, free to use, you know, whatever. Um, which I think is like musicians is certainly where, you know, our instincts would lie. Um, you're going to see a lot more problems uh, than, than what you, than, you know, what we can do uh, if we do claim that ownership, right. And, and can have some control and some police, uh, you know, police the usage, right. To, to, to a degree. Um, so that's kind of why, and we, by the way, we thought about that um, ages ago, right. Mm -hmm. Now, in the cases of professional producers, right, um, where they're using it in the studio and they like need the rights or for you, right, or for for artists, um, you know, we we basically have like a contact us model that has been a little a little tough to scale, to be honest, but is is sure. working, right? Um, and that is basically, hey, like I want to use this for my film or I want to use this for my X, Y, and Z. You know, we've cleared certain rights that you can just sort of upgrade and pay us nine bucks a month and uh, just download it and go use it, right? Um, and we we've all and we grant you a license. You still can't do you know um, crazy offensive stuff with it, but you can put it in your podcast, right? So mm -hmm. we're we're trying to find that line on like what can we sort of allow people to do and not let it get out of control, and you know what what can we um, like, like, how do we make sure that the, there's a, you know, ethical use, um, of, of this tech that is, is quite powerful, right. And can obviously create a lot of music. And I mean, think about how much music you could create, right. About, you know, offensive topics in a very short period of time using, you know, this, yeah. this type of technology. So that's, that's one half of it. And the other half is, you know, as, as much as we would maybe want, um, 10 million, a hundred million people, you know, buying, <laughs> buying the book, right. Uh, reading through understanding they have to register an IPI number to get the publishing of like all of the sort of crazy stuff that happens in the background. Um, what we found is that most people, especially first time music makers and, you know, people in this creative class are like, Whoa, like I can, I can make, you know, some, some money from this. Like I can make a few bucks from this, or I can augment, you know, my existing channel or my existing uh, audience through, you know, music rights revenue mm -hmm. that formerly would never be available to them because they would have to know all this crazy stuff. Um, and the fact that we own everything, right, makes it really, really easy to facilitate that. Um, yeah. And then the third, I would just say from a training data perspective, right, to the extent that we're using um, your behaviors, right, to some degree. Um, yep. Hey, that's cool. Hey, that's not cool. I don't like this. I do like this. Um, to the extent that we're going to train models, right, on uh, you know, our own user stuff, if we don't own the copyrights there, right, we get into sort of a weird 
situation, right? Where you sure. could be creating stuff that like we would not be allowed to <laughs> train models well, and, on. And I appreciate uh, so, that. You, yeah. yeah. So, so those are the main main reasons, right? Like why we have that model. In the that first makes place. sense, and I appreciate you laying it out. And I and I also appreciate you mentioned at the very top of this uh, conversation of how you have not uh, trained your um, AI on any copyrighted copyrighted music, um, and that's not where it's getting its uh, training from, right? Right. Correct. Correct. Which is not the case for. And Chat by the way, GPT. and we and we'd like to. And we very much like of to, of course, because it would make and, it better. But like that is, and we, that is and the we're big seeking debate. permission. Yeah, and yeah. and that's it, which you're going about it the right way <laughs> of seeking permission exactly. from the rights holders. Whereas like you know ChatGPT and everyone else, that's why they're getting sued right now by authors and comedians. And like Sarah Silverman is suing um, because they're right. like saying right. write a joke like Sarah Silverman, and boom, they got it. It's really really good at that. And like that's why like you referenced before, the writers of Hollywood and the actors of Hollywood are are on strike now because they don't want um you know ai without their permission and and probably you know some kind of compensation to to be trained on their creations and then not getting compensated for it or or giving them permission so you know um yes chat gbt came out of the gates just like a lot of tech companies where they ask you know it's better to ask for forgiveness not permission um and so they, they you know you know move fast and break things and um that's uh yeah that's why they're getting sued so much right now because like in the music industry is no exception like they're going after hardcore now the nmpa and ria and everyone oh yeah. oh yeah um because if you train it um you know on yeah and it, we don't have laws actually unfortunately like the reason that that drake and weekend song uh that 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 um you know quote unquote ai you know deep fake whatever you want to call it of sure. drake and yeah. Weekend got removed wasn't because you're not allowed to create a deep fake of the weekend or drake it got removed because they used a sample that wasn't cleared that had absolutely nothing to do with what AI a fascinating or coincidence what a fascinating coincidence eh well okay you're going yeah yeah no but but okay but either way the laws are not caught up to where we're, we are right now and that's a problem and like, you know, yeah. I don't have any faith in Congress that they're going to pass laws in, in any meaningful time frame that's going to address this. And so, yeah, we are in this Wild West component area, um, you know, like uh, totally. training. I mean, I, I guess I'm curious because it would have made it far better. Uh, why have you not? Because or maybe there are laws that I'm just not familiar with, like just using, I guess, like ingesting music into your platform to train it or something like that like is that illegal um yeah let's <laughs> let's let's break I don't that know, down actually what's no the no, no let's let's break that down <laughs> and and something that i feel very um blessed about right now right is that uh being in dc at the moment um i've been able to be in the room where it's happening you know a lot um and it is very uh, because, you know, just, just to be honest with you, we, we've been in talks with uh, rights holders, right. And, and relevant parties and organizations about this for like a while, yeah. uh, quite, quite some like more than a year. Um, and, or maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe a little, yeah, we've been talking about this for a while because we, I think we see where the ball is moving. And, and I think that, you know, we have a responsibility to answer, let's start with chat GBT, right. Mm -hmm. That's probably why we're here talking about this stuff. Um, the ball moved not just for the use of the training data, but also the consumer expectation of the interface, right? People want text to music. Yeah. And, you know, when people like we, we've got some some sort of pilots running, in, right, where we've asked people, hey, like, give us your prompt. And a lot of the time when you ask somebody for, hey, like, what kind of song do you want to make? They're going to reference another artist, right? They're yeah. going to say, like, I want a song that sounds like, you know, so and so. Right. Um, and you know, that's not at least the way we approach it, right? You can't speak for everybody. The way we approach it is, well, that's, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to give them a copy of that song. Right. Um, but the best way to answer that prompt is probably to create models that do use, uh, training, you know, training data that would be subject to copyright. Sure. Um, and so we, we've, we've been in the room, you know, with the copyright office, um, I spoke publicly right at, at this event, um, very recently, uh, there's a lot of open questions. There's a lot of very heated uh, feelings, you know, on on both sides. And I think that the law is 
we're, maybe we're, let's put aside where the law is. And I completely agree with you. That probably does need to be some new rules, right? Um, about this stuff that are more explicit than they are today, because yeah. you get into these issues of fair use and is it a transformative output? Is it a derivative work? Is it the same thing? Um, yeah. Is it something that's totally new, right? And obviously there's a bunch of lawsuits out there. Um, and, you know, that's why we've done things the way we've done. We didn't want a lawsuit. Um, yeah. And we want to do things, you know, the, the right way to to use your words. Um, look, I let's step back and just ask what's the right thing to do? What's the ethical thing to do? Um, I got into this, as you know, because I care about artists. I've been that guy standing on the corner with the violin out, hoping that you drop in a dollar. Right. right. And I, I think about that every day um, as we're as we're doing what we're doing. Right. It, and especially in these conversations, in these rooms. And here are some uncomfortable realities, right? There's an uncomfortable reality that you could answer that prompt in a way that does not use anybody's data. Mm -hmm. You could probably do it in, in ways that would not violate any current copyright law. You could have 10 billion songs a, a year come out. <laughs> and because of the decisions that because if you want to make a sort of protectionist decision that says nobody can use any copyrighted data and you, and there and you know maybe you could pay for it but the you have to pay eight million dollars per track or whatever right yeah you could create a universe where the whole next hundred years of music which I believe the vast majority of will be more hyper personalized listening right so mm -hmm. more songs that people are creating for themselves and, and for their friends and their family mm -hmm. yeah. uh, not paying back the first hundred years of music for anything. Right. Right. Um, if you don't figure this thing out. Yes. I also think that there is an uncomfortable reality that is we're not the only country in the world. And, you know, I've, I've had conversations with people from other <laughs> jurisdictions that have come to us and said some version of, you know, you can do whatever you want here. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, we don't have there. Not every place that you could host a server has the same uh, copyright laws that we do or subject to those, those same laws. And frankly, you know, some of those places are, are advancing this stuff and advancing the stuff in music yeah. much, much faster than, than we are here. Uh, yeah. I think because there's this, there's, you know, the, the specter of the lawsuit hanging over everybody. Right. So that's an uncomfortable reality. Yeah. Um, now, if you're going to answer those two issues, right, which is one, this is a ball that's rolling and you're not going to stop it. Um, and, you know, two, we're not the only country in the world and whatever rules. And even if we did pass a law that everybody was thrilled with. Right. You know, the, we're not the only country and we're not the only advanced country that you could run a, you know, a server out of. Um, now you get to this obvious question of, well, then what do we do? Right. How should we pay for this stuff? What yeah. is fair? How do you break this down? How do we make sure you don't repeat the same mistakes of the past? And that yeah. has been. I can tell you that conversation is progressing. It's nuanced. Um, a lot of, there's it, it's getting mixed up in this conversation about streaming. Um, I would say independents have a view, you know, majors have a view mm -hmm. and publishers have maybe a slightly different view than, than labels. And it's all, um, however chaotic you think it might be, uh, I can guarantee you it is more. So in terms of the actual, um, you know, how, how this is going to land, what I would say is that I do think that everyone is taking this very seriously. Yeah. I think that everybody has their own motivations and I, w without passing any judgment on any current sort of legal thinking, right. Um, as, as somebody who's not an attorney, I, I would just say that there's a right way to do this. And the right way to do this is to pay the artists whose data, uh, and songs, um, you're using, uh, full stop. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and so I think we're past that. And I think we're just into the how. Right. Yes. And what are the models that, that you could use? Right. Or is it co-ownership? Is it a revenue share? Is it a you know, th there's a lot of different ways that that, that can come out. Um, we have specific, you know, specific proposals out uh, to try to right. make this happen. And so we're, yeah, we're fighting that fight. The how is really challenging because it's like a lot of the, the problems right now that I've seen with a lot of these AI um, based kind of um, chat models um you know language learning technology uh is that unfortunately a lot of them can't really cite their sources uh they can't really tell how something has been created well, or why or whatever they're just choosing not to share it or, or uh, something yeah. like that 
And it's like, um, you know, if you say, all right, write a song uh, like, you know, in the style of Taylor Swift, um, if it then ends up pulling from Olivia Rodrigo as well, but you only typed in Taylor Swift, are they both going to be getting paid? Let me, yeah, let me, let me, let me, um, intervene there because I, this is, this is usually where the conversation starts is with, Hey, wouldn't it be great if it worked this way? Yeah. Um, and it just doesn't work that way. Right. Yeah. I think what everybody wants is something where you could take this, this output, right. And then you could attribute it to whatever the underlying work is because we can all make sense of that right because we have remixes today we have covers we have compilations right. we right. there's sort of like an existing system and thought and process around like how how we we do that mm -hmm. um but let's not forget that the, this is a statistics problem right this is a what should the right next word be what should the right next note be what should the right um sort of next you know production rule be for example right mm -hmm. um based on this this text input into a system that's been you know uh, condition on those text inputs. And so it is not something where you could easily or, or really ever um, say, well, this segment of the song, uh, you, you know, came from came from Taylor Swift and this one came from, uh, you know, Olivia Rodrigo. It's it's more of a you, you had this piece of text. Now you have this song, the model itself, you know, quote unquote, learned uh, from a huge you know number of, of sources. It right. could have pulled, so it, it just doesn't really like. We want to rationalize it as like, oh, it pulled from these influences, and it's more of no, like, but it probably no, you have this monolithic thing that's yeah. that's yeah, that's yeah. just that is te learned. you're teaching it what the right next thing to do is, right? And you know, just to, to so, so then yeah, so so how do you how do you pay for that? Uh, yeah. Um, well, well, look, you, I, I'm just throwing out, you know, this isn't anything specific or <laughs> any, anything anybody's um, agreed to or anything, but you you could say, okay, well, there's a how how would you solve that problem in a black box, for example, for a new video service, right? Um, if you can't necessarily do attribution, right? If you can't attribute every single usage of every single song, um, you know, how does it work? And there's existing models out there that either take market share, you, you know, um, that says, well, you know, generally the market share was this, how do we pay for radio usage, <laughs> right? Um, it's it's not perfect. How do you, How do you pay for uh, you know, songs that are playing in bars. It's not perfect. There's there are sort of these agreements and these systems that say, well, if it was this amount, you know, th these songs were playing at this time or that song was playing at this time, um, then you can do your best to attribute the usage in a certain period and, and you can move on. I think the publishing world has a lot of solutions like that um, that, could, that could be that, that you could use, um, you know, to, to apply to this. And, and, you know, let's say you, you do that, then you have this other issue of like, what if the user, what, what if the artist doesn't want to be part of it? Right. Mm -hmm. um, that's something we've been thinking a lot about lately in the how the, the, we know there's going to be certain artists who just never want to be part of anything, you know, AI. Um, I think in the, in the realm of, um, um, and look, we could, we could spend five hours going through these issues, but in, in the realm of especially uh, some of these diffusion based systems, the music ML based systems that are coming out, you know, maybe you have a name and likeness violation by mistake, just by nature of the fact that you maybe you've licensed one type of, of uh, you know, use, but you haven't licensed other kinds of use. So when the, the, the lawyers, right, are, are all trying to work this out and figure this out. Yeah. Um, I really, really hope uh, and I'm, I'm optimistic, eternally optimistic uh, that we're going to be able to, to announce, you know, some, some pretty cool things on this front, um, and be able to say like, Hey, look, here's, here's a model. Here's everybody who went into it. Here's how you're going to yeah. get paid for it. Here's how it sounds. Come check it out. Yeah. Um, you know, I, that's been my, it's been like 80% of my, my, my days wait. trying and to I make that you, happen. Yeah. And I do hope you figure it out. And I do hope that you're starting with the independence, um, because that is where the innovation is going to come from. Because, you know, as we've seen, you know, the majors don't historically innovate, they sue, and then they try to figure <laughs> it out or whatever. Um, you know, but the indies are the ones innovating. And I appreciate, you know, Yes, bring it like Grimes. You know, she's like, no. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm yeah. totally down for you to use my my likeness and my voice. Just pay me 50% of what you make. And that's awesome. Like, that is how you innovate. Like, allow these artists to opt in, like you said, you know, and then figure out a payment method mechanism that seems fair and whatever. And, um, you know, and, and it's like that can open up creativity. 
but it can also open up brand new revenue streams. It can also, like, I don't like when you mentioned it, what this is unfortunately how a lot of it works. I don't like the market share argument because then the majors are always going to push for that and they always win on that component they're like well you know it's like yeah the royalties go into this black box and if well, you then don't you claim get it with who's calculating years, it and how are you calculating it yeah. yeah yeah and then in three years later it gets divvied up based on market share so it's to the major's benefit to uh to just like keep that hidden and secret from all the indies that just don't know how to claim their money because they don't have the majority of the market share. So then after three years, they're like, sweet, we get all these independence money <laughs> that they didn't come and claim. And now it's I, ours. Tough I, shit. I think, I, I, so I, I think you'd appreciate it. I'm going to pull you know, I'll, I'll give a diplomatic answer, which is that <laughs> I think that those see now we're talking about the right stuff, right? Yeah. Now, now you're getting into the how you're getting into the, well, what are the trade-offs? You know, if if a if a if if there's an explicit you know use of an artist in a prompt, is that should you pay more for that? Right? If if there's a description of the artist but doesn't mention the name, is that a work rate? Like like that's that's the interesting you know right. th those are the interesting questions. Or you know y y your views on you know on on market share or 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 whatever. Like let's let's go there. Right? Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. we're past the like you know, this is evil or we're past the, how do you, right. how are you going to deal with it? Right. And and now we're into, again, how do you make sure the next hundred years of music does not paper over the last hundred years of music? And this is why yes. we have, right. um, we're not, not paper over and I, and I, and I, I, maybe we're not giving the last hundred years enough credit, right? There are eternal, you know, amazing evergreen songs out there. Um, yeah. and look, I, I keep thinking about, and by the way, we, are aware of models that have been created that have used uh, our songs without permission, by huh. the way. <laughs> right. Interesting. Like, wow. So, so, next, so next we generation. sit, <laughs> right. So, so we, we sit in an interesting place, right. Where we are developing these technologies. We're probably the only company I think that is, mm -hmm. that is simultaneously developing these and is also a rights holder, right. To a, yeah. to a, to a relatively substantial number of, of um, original works. And so, yeah, we're, we're sitting in a really interesting seat. I have more questions for you today than answers. Uh, on on a lot of this stuff, but I think the I do think the conversation needs to move in that direction, right? Yeah. In the direction away from like, ah, <laughs> what is yeah. this? Uh, yeah. What are we gonna do? Into like, all right, look, this is gonna happen, right? To some degree, it already is. Um, what are the right models? So I would love to hear from you. I don't know if you're prepared for this question. Like, how how would you make it work, right? Let's say yeah. like what because this is what I keep asking everybody, right? Every everybody has all this like vitriol of and, and yeah. when i say everybody i mean majors have a different opinion than indies than publishers then right there's a lot of different stakeholders well, I think there's here a way producers. you can so where you do know, you how would you design I, it right yeah how i would design it you're putting me on the spot and i'm just going to come up with what i'm coming <laughs> up with right now i haven't really thought much about this but i'm at, through this i might you know that's it, percolating but it's like okay um bring in some respected producers songwriters and artists that want to opt into this and categorize and classify uh these style of productions under these keywords um these style of songwriting under these keywords you know tempo all of that uh lyrics all of that just like how you normally tag it like in a sync program like how like um you know music supervisors are tagging the music and like moods and and feelings and all of that uh, tempos, BPMs, the metadata, that's like part of, you know, all the songs within disco, the disco, you know, platform that every music uh, supervisor and sync licensing people use, you know, you tag all of this stuff, you bring all these artists in. And then when you use the language to, to type out what kind of song you're looking for, it's going to start to grab all of those keywords. And it's just like, oh, this kind of production, this is sad, this is moody, this is up tempo, this is, you know, to use like, uh, your term, uh, the uh you know this is dusty or this is like morning sun this is a tropical taste or you know like you call it that but like, you pull out all these things and then you can then as long as you can attribute it and you can trace back now we know that this song had been created by the influence of these 30 artists producers songwriters over here because it's like in the vocals we want the vocals to kind of sound like this so now it is and then by typing in all those keywords, it excludes, let's say you have 10,000 uh, artists that are part of this, uh, you know, group, it excludes 9,000, uh, you know, uh, 970 of them.
because now you only have these 30 that your keywords have pinged. So now it's going to study those 30 songwriters, producers, artists based on the keywords that you put in there. And now we know, oh, this song was, was created by inspiration of these 30 artists. So there's, those 30 artists get paid. That could be a way. And then you're like, oh, let's save these settings. I like this. And then you can start tweaking it. Like you kind of tweak it, open up the, you know, the guidelines, reduce them, you know, splice them up however you want. And then if you do use an artist's name in the style of X, Y, Z, um, you know, if that artist isn't necessarily part of this, the 10,000 user base that have uh, agreed to do it, you have people, it's kind of like what Pandora did way back when they first came out with their, um, the music genome project where they had like, every song was ingested into this, you know, pen and they had human listeners that tagged every song. So even if you say, I want a song to sound like Taylor Swift, if you're not using Taylor Swift's music for the, for the model to study it, she doesn't need to get paid from that. If her music's not being used to study it, but a, the tag of like, Oh, Taylor Swift actually means peppy upbeat, uh, specific lyrics, uh, you know, coming of age, you know, uh, use of, you know, this kind of production, acoustic guitars, and there's like pop production, da, 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 whatever, you know, and, or in the style of this song, it's already, it can be tagged that way, where it doesn't necessarily just need to even study Taylor Swift's song. So she wouldn't be even getting paid because she's not opted in from that. That's, I think, where I would start. Yeah. So, and, and I would, I would, so what, you know, one of the things that, has been discussed right is a you know you you so i would maybe translate that into direct attribution or as direct as direct as you could possibly you get can, yeah. right in terms yeah. of of, mm-hmm. of attribution it's, it's it's interesting thought i i mean look i'm i i think that first of all i i want to hear from a lot more independent artists on this i'll be honest it's one of the reasons i want to come on and talk talk to you like i i see you as sort of a conduit for for that and and you've always been a conduit for that um and, you know, I'm talking to a lot of independent labels, right? But independent labels might have different view or in publishers might have different views from artists, et cetera. Yep. We're never going to get to something that everyone is thrilled with, right? Yes. And someone is always going to be mad at me. That's something I've accepted uh, over the next. <laughs> there's always going to be somebody who's like, wow, this yeah. is amazing. And another person who's like, oh, my gosh, you're destroying, you know, this thing or that thing or whatever. Um, and we're we're prepared for that. But I think what, you know, maybe, maybe to maybe to bring it um Okay, so look, you could create, for example, an attribution algorithm, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you could say, may- maybe not to the degree of specificity that you're talking about, but it's not unrealistic to think that you could take some output and you could say, okay, compare this output to all the training data, give me a percentage, right, of, of you know, what, what the underlying training data was used and then yes. you know, pay, out, pay out, you know, that way. Yes. Um, but, you know, now you've, let, let's just be honest about now you've opened up a new thing that can be gained, which is how does that algorithm attribute, right? Of so course. basically, whoever is going to control that algorithm and, and how it does attribution. And let's say, you know, you, it, it turns out it's, you know, 2% of an Ari song, right? Yeah. That got attributed. Um, but that 2% was really similar to somebody else's 2%. But because of the way the algorithm was created, you know, somebody else gets paid instead of you. And then you come and you sue us, right? And you're like, hey, that wasn't 2%. Actually, mine was 2.8%. Now right. you're getting like that right back into all the craziness of, um, you know, some of some of how things work, um, work currently. I think from a from a high, higher level, you know, I, I really do. I'm not a like a, a, a do doomsday profit or anything, but, but I really do see this as being a huge shift, right. In the way music is created, consumed, um, thought about, right. It's going to redefine terms. Um, I think everybody knows on the inside and the outside, first of all, how amazing the models are that have not been released, um, out of fear for, you know, not answering some of these questions that you and I are talking about right now. Mm -hmm. Um, I think everybody knows that, you know, look, maybe we're at the GPT two version of, of music generation today, but we're going to get to that chat GPT version. Um, and that's going to change some stuff, right. Um, these issues aside, right. It, it, it is going to happen. And there is not, what that means is there's an opportunity to, rewrite some of those rules, write some of those wrongs, you know, or perceived wrongs, um, and create 
the system that you and I maybe always dreamed of, right? As as artists, uh, as yeah. something that is attributing, you know, fairly that is giving a a, a real voice uh, to anybody who wants to consider themselves an artist. You you said it very briefly earlier, but I think it's an important point because there are real conversations going on about who counts, right? Mm -hmm. Who gets to count as an artist? And if you're somebody yeah. who spent an hour on Boomi, you don't count, right? Mm -hmm. Is an argument that like actually a decent number of people uh, are, are making. And so there's, and, and as you noted, like we're, we're not keeping the, the, the 80, we're keep, we're, we're keeping the 20. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I mean, I'm sure it's in your book somewhere about how label deals normally work, but it's usually the other way around. And so, so I think yeah. you're, you, you know me well enough to know that like, what we can accomplish here, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of creating a, a much better world for that, you know, for what I see currently as an emerging creative class that will soon become mainstream, right? Um, that will pay artists fairly uh, for the use of their, their systems to power that new creative class. Uh, there is so much good that I think is going to come out on, on the other side of this, mm. that it makes that, that, that's what keeps me going. That's what we believe and, and, and really what we care about. Um, and how we're going to continue uh, building our product. And there's there's a really cool light at, at the end of this tunnel. It's going to be a yep. weird tunnel but <laughs> to get there. Uh, but there is something really, really beautiful and amazing on, on the other side of this. I, I believe that very strongly. Well, Alex, thank you so much. This has been um, so illuminating. And I appreciate, uh, you know, I got me really thinking about it um, in totally different ways. And I think everyone listening to this, uh, you know, we've gotten past the fear factor, uh, hopefully, at the, by this point, and, and can get excited by it. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's, it's it, you know, we're moving through. Those who listen to it, it's like, it's like it, it is an exciting time, but we do have to approach this in the right way. And I think that like your background in history, and as like coming at it from a musician standpoint, and like just envisioning this from like what makes sense from kind of the musician, the artist standpoint, not necessarily like what is the historical legal mechanisms that have been used around these kids? Because that the laws are always behind the times and the technology. It's just like, you know, we have to innovate, but let's innovate with the people that want to innovate with us. And I think starting there, there's enough super talented creators out there that want to be part of this next wave of music creation. Uh, and we start with them. And if the labels want to dig in their heels uh, and try to prevent you know this from happening let them let them try um you know and then move in the other direction with the people that want to be part of this and that will then innovate in a in a fair equitable manner that compensates them everybody um in a meaningful way so uh i'm gonna i'm gonna end with one final question that i ask everybody who comes on the show and that is what does it mean to you to make it in the new music business <laughs> Wow, what does it mean? What does it mean to make it? Um, I'll tell you what it means to me. Uh, at the risk of getting a little sappy here, which is, I, I had we had an experience where we, we we got a very upfront look at a user, right? And it was a parent and kid. We actually have a lot of parents and kids, and they, you know, the the parent was telling me, you know, oh hey, by the way, like. Um, you know, my kids, my kids coming home and they're, we made the song on Boomy, by the way, and we made it together. Um, and they're very, very excited. Right. And there was a, it, it was something like it had gone live, but they weren't aware of it. And I was like, Hey, like, here it is, you know, you can go listen to it. Uh, kid comes home is, is just over the moon about it, it was, it was like the coolest thing, right. In this kid's universe that like the song that they made with their parent is like, right there like next to you know their their favorite artists yeah um immediately they're they're just like playing it like over and over and over again right and and it's there it's like uh, through the rest of the time that we were there it was just like on somewhere like in in the background because it was like yeah, so you know it was it was so much fun <laughs> yeah. and that songs me it was is going to be so meaningful right uh to that kid to that parent to that family you know through their whole lives mm. uh, and that's making it that's how i define making it mm. right we i think we think of making it as being like i'm number x on the whatever chart and that 
kid and that parent like X on the whatever chart, not part of it. <laughs> That's like right. a totally other thing. Right. One of the things that people don't get about this is that there's new value to be created here. There's new meaning to be created here. Music is not something that should be restricted or, or, or confined in any way. So making it for me is creating that experience for millions and millions of people and eventually billions of people. Uh, that's, that's making it right. Nothing to do with anything else. Alex Mitchell. Thank you so much. It's great. Thanks. Sorry. We'll see you again soon. And alas, here is my boomy creation, a song I've titled coffee by the artist boom Ari. Take it away. Coffee. Today's episode was edited by Mikey Evans with music by Brassroots District and produced by all the great people at Ari's Tape. Till nine bed and bed and till nine thirty. Coffee, I'm ready to find us work. Need long aft, need long, need long aft. In bed and bed and bed until nine bed and bed until nine thirty. Coffee, I'm ready to find us work. Need long aft, need long, need long aft. It's just lining my ins, 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 